So in addition to our gardens, we also have a flock of chickens. And so today I would like to show you around our setup and just give you a feel for the way that we run our flock and how we maintain things. Um, so as I've said in previous videos, my goal with most of this farm is to come up with ways to minimize work and produce as much as possible on as little work, which means designing my systems uh, for that end goal. So keep that in mind as I'm showing you my chickens and know that that was the goal behind a lot of this setup. So I'm gonna show you where they spend most of their time. Uh, we have a lot of woods as you can see behind us uh, here. And so we utilize that resource because it's the chicken's natural environment. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour of that. So come on along. We have 15 hens and two roosters. That big guy there is our original rooster and we just call him Mr. Rooster. And he's a bit of a handful. He's a bit aggressive. And if I go up to him, he will run after me, but the uh, the upside to this is that he's a pretty um, effective protector. He does a really good job looking after his girls. He takes his job takes his job very seriously and he will even go after my dog who's about five times his size. Um, so if he w he's brave enough to do that, he can handle most predators. Now, he's not going to ward off a coyote, but anything smaller than that, he's got a good chance of. So that's why we keep him. And as soon as he stops doing his job really well, we're going to eat him. Because <laughs> he's not worth the trouble otherwise. They stay nice and cool here in the woods. And even though we have a lot of open pasture... They don't seem interested in going out there, one, because it's just hotter, and two, because there's a natural instinct to stay undercover <coughs> and away from uh, overhead predators. So although we free range our chickens most of the time, we also have a contained fenced off yard area for them that's connected to their coop. And this allows us to keep them contained when we need to when in the winter when there are predators around and we we want to keep them more like safer or when we go on vacation and someone else is taking care of them and we don't want them to have to make sure they're all back from the woods at the end of the day and close the gate and all that and just simplify the process so and it's and it's plenty of space for them to hang out for a, an extended period of time um, without really destroying the space too much or running out of fodder so it's, it's a temporary use case, but we have it and it provides a lot of protection. And it allows us to lock this fencing up and then leave that door, the little chicken door, open at night. So I don't always have to shut it. Although I do shut it in the winter when predators are a little more active. So this is our yard and we have chosen to put our compost bins in this yard with the chicken so they have full-time access to it. It's a little bit messy, but that's mostly paper plates, you see, um, which we add along with our kitchen scraps because it just adds kind of a carbon source um, to help with the smell, and it just gives more material for the pile. Now, we don't get a lot of, of compost as a usable resource because it's in the chicken yard, but we've done this. We've chosen uh, intentionally to do this and sacrifice that resource for the benefit we it gives to the chickens and the increase in productivity we get for the for a decrease in feed we have to give them. Um, so that's our compost pile and this is our fenced yard and we chose this area specifically because for two reasons. One, there's this nice huge shed that was already here when we bought the property and we weren't going to need all of that space and so we decided to fence off or wall off a portion of the shed for our chicken coop so we didn't have to build one from scratch. And that saved time and money and was just 
an obvious choice. The other reason we chose this space was because this part of the yard on the edge of the woods here was really a garbage space. The, the previous owners had dumped a lot of excess materials and junk and trash and cat litter and a bunch of nastiness and this area was covered in poison ivy. So since it wasn't much use for anything else, we decided, hey, we'll put the chickens here. They can convert this space into something usable. And they have. They've completely uh, taken care of the poison ivy. The poison ivy is completely gone and they keep it under control if it ever tries to pop up. And we've cleaned it up and they use it so much better than anything else could. So One of the ways that we manage this space when the chickens are locked in this yard is by mulching it really heavily. And this keeps that uh, bare soil um, from just accumulating manure and becoming an issue for them um, as far as cleanliness, as far as disease and bacteria go. Um, so as you can see right now, we're getting to a point where they've scratched a lot of the mulch that we've put in there over the winter and they've exposed the ground. So it's time for us to come in and put in at least six inches, if not more, of carbon material right into the yard and provide a really nice fluffy sort of bedding just in this open area. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into this shed and show you my the in, inside of the coop and also my door system. So there's a latch on that little door and it's connected to a string on the inside and so I can automatically open and close the door rather than having to go into the yard to shed it which is how we originally did it and we, then we came up with the system to save me time and effort. So come on with me and I'm going to show you the inside now. So this here is our shed that we have built our chicken coop into the back of it and this is just a really simple wall that we framed up and tacked chicken wire to. Uh, we could have we could have built a full wall, but, and it probably would have kept the, the rest of the shed a little bit cleaner because they scratch through, they scratch their bedding through the, uh, through the chicken wire, but it allows us to get a really nice cross breeze from that window on nice days through the open double doors on the shed. Anyway, so we just used what we had, and this was way bigger than we needed. This whole, this sheds hold, holds gardening supplies. We even have this like makeshift brooder for when we raise chicks up, um, or brooder, big brooder box. Um, and so it does the job. Um, and there are roosts and everything, water feed. We're gonna go in there and just show you around a little bit. This is our string system that I showed from the outside. And the yellow string we pull to close. So the door's open right now, and if I pull, there we go, the yellow string, it'll close the door. And that way, when I'm working in here, I can keep the roosters out or the whole flock really they're all out in the woods right now so I don't need to keep it shut so I can open it back up with the white string and it, whoa so the white string pulls hold on there we go gotta get it latched and then I just hang the carabiners back up on this screw so we're gonna go in these are my roosts. They're just um, some scrap PVC, and I've got some. I've got a branch and some extra scrap lumber, and I just used whatever I could. And I, I, I put them across the corners so that where they poop isn't on top of where they eat. Um, and I use a deep litter mulch system, so a lot of this is just broken down wood chips and straw, and it's 
getting close to the point where a lot of it has composted and I'm going to remove it and replace it with fresh chips. Um, and I just come in here and I use a pitchfork. Here's my pitchfork, it just lives in the coop. And I come in and I just sort of turn over any exposed chicken poop that I see and that keeps the odor down and it's essentially just one big composter. So I'm, I just keep the, the level really high and as soon as it starts to smell at all, I come in and I dump a load of wood chips or I take out some and, and replace with wood chips or straw. And as long as the carbon material is balanced out um, with the amount of poop that they're producing, um, I can keep the odor down and it stays, you know, and I'm producing a, a valuable resource at the same time. So these are our nesting boxes. I made these out of some scrap lumber, some kitty litter um, five gallon buckets, and some dollar store plastic uh, bins here. Just little baskets and they just sit in these little trays. Um, and some of the girls use these nice little nesting boxes, but the rest of them just started laying in the corner here. So I had to put something down to keep the eggs nice and clean and give them a space they liked. Um, but yeah, so most of them use this and I, I've already harvested eggs today, but mostly I'll come in and there will be a whole bunch in that little box there. And then a couple of the girls like to sit in here and use those boxes. Um, and then I feed in these big black rubber open feeder tubs because I feed them fermented whole grain or soaked whole grain feed that I mix myself. And so I just come in with a bucket and it's moist and wet and I don't want to put it in a, a feeder with a small opening that might get stuck. So I just dump it in here once a day and they eat it all. And I don't leave like free access feed around like a lot of people because I want to push my flock to forage and they have a lot of access and I know that they can feed themselves. So I just fed my chickens and refilled the water and now they're in here eating, pecking away at the feed that I put in the tubs and I'm gonna go and give you a little bit of a tour of what my feeding process looks like, what my mixed feed is. And We're here in my garage where I keep my chicken feed. And I feed my chickens a whole grain mix that I make myself. Um, and so I buy my grains in bulk in 50 pound bags, either from my local farmer's co-op or through Azure Standard, which is my food, bulk food buying group that I pick up once a month from. And they have, they have deliveries all over this area, um, but mine is about five minutes from my house, so it's really convenient. And I order it online and then pick it up once a month. Um, and I can get a lot of bulk grains that way, organic bulk grains. So I mix my chicken feed in these two gallon buckets and all of my feed is in separate cans with tops uh, these metal trash cans they're 50 gallon trash cans and um, that keeps the rodents out it keeps all of the grain protected and usually keeps the moisture out and anything from eating it so it lasts a while and it's better than keeping them around in my garage in their bags, which I did for a while until I realized that was a disaster. Um, and then I upgraded to this system here and I really like it. So the first thing I'm going to put into my mix, and I mix this individually uh, every couple of days. I do a couple buckets at a time so that I can soak a couple buckets at a time before I feed them. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, field peas. And these are going to go in the bottom of the bucket. And then I'm going to put a scoop of black oil sunflower seeds. 
and then a scoop of either oats or barley. Um, whatever I can get my hands on, they have a similar um, nutrient ratio, similar protein content, so either one works. Um, right here, this, this is a mixture of oats and barley because I had both and put them in the same can because they serve the same purpose in this mix. So then I'm going to get a scoop of wheat and I buy this it's called chicken wheat and so it's just it's not your high quality flour wheat it has some imperfections and some odd bits and odd, of odds and ends but it's still high quality for my chickens and it's organic so that goes in there and then I'm going to add some minerals to it. Um, I'm going to add kelp. Now this is a lot, so I'm only gonna use a little sprinkle here. And the kelp is a great um, trace mineral uh, amendment. I buy it in 50, gal uh, 50 pound bags. And I use it on my garden as a garden amendment, as a nitrogen amendment, and or nitrogen supplement. And I also use it in my ch for my chickens. So kelp is a really good option for me. You can also buy bags of nutrient balancer for making your own chicken feed, and so it's all already mixed. But I did my research before I did this, and I tested out um, what works for my flock. And I realized that a sprinkle of kelp in every bucket of feed plus some brewer's yeast added after it's soaked before I feed them gives my flock about everything that they need nutrient-wise that they don't get from foraging. And then a little bit of crushed eggshell calcium supplement for my layers and that uh, that's a really nice well-balanced mix for them now if I am using this mix for meat chickens which I sometimes raise up a batch of meat chickens what I'll do is I'll increase the protein element in this so I'll do more field peas and more sunflower seeds in, and so that'll be a higher protein content and I can calculate the protein pretty accurately based on uh, volume and protein content for each ingredient and so my regular mix equal parts of all of these ingredients is about 16 to 18 um, percent protein crude protein and so if I need more a higher protein content for meat chickens, I will add more protein and I can raise that up to 20 or 22 percent if I really need it to bulk uh, my chicken meat chickens up. I sometimes add alfalfa pellets to this mix in the winter time when their access to vegetation is pretty limited and this helps sort of fill in some of the the missing missing nutrients that they would normally be getting it's also got quite a bit of protein in it too and that helps um, a higher protein content in the winter helps sometimes i'll throw in a handful of homegrown corn just a little bit uh, to up energy production and heat production in the winter i don't feed um, soy or corn usually in my feed i try alternative sources but i do grow my own corn and once in a while uh, when I feel like they need a little extra energy boost or they're looking a little bit lean in the winter time, I will put just a handful of homegrown corn in there for them. And as long as it's soaked in with everything else, they can eat it just fine whole. And if I leave it long enough, it'll sprout. So we're in my sunroom and I'm going to show you the finished product here. This is the... This is the feed that I just made. So these are what I just made here. And there's they're covered with water a couple of inches. And I'm going to let them sit here. Okay, I'm going to let them sit here uh, for about two to three days. And then what's going to happen 
is they're going to soak up all of that water and it's going to turn into something like this. So this has soaked up and started sprouting. So this has just completely unlocked the nutrient potential of these grains and made what the feed that I am giving my chickens so much more rich and so much more useful to them, not to mention it softened the grains and it makes it easier for them to eat. And then, so this is, I just keep them inside so that they don't get too hot. They will sprout and ferment much faster if I keep them out in the shed with my chickens. So I keep them in this sunroom here, which is really easily accessible to my back porch. It's where it's kind of my office. Um, so the only thing that I have left to do here with this mix that I've just soaked is I'm going to add a little bit of that crushed eggshell calcium supplement. So since I have a lot of eggs, and I use a lot of eggs, I just keep the shells and then, uh, and I keep them in a big paper bag and let them dry in there. And then I bake them once in a while. And I try and do this in the outdoor grill so that my house doesn't smell. Because when you bake them, they give off a really horrible odor. And so I bake them. And this changes the flavor of the eggshell so that the chickens don't recognize it as eggshell. Um, because if they realize they're eating their eggs, they will go after their own eggs. So I try and prevent this as much as possible. So I bake it and then I crush it up. Um, here we go, into a powder, and I do this in a food processor, and then I just sprinkle a little bit over, and a little goes a long way, so I just sprinkle it over my feed mix, and then I take this feed out to the shed, and I dump it in the open rubber bins, and they go after it. Oh, after I put the brewer's yeast. So I have a bucket of brewer's yeast, in the shed near the chicken coop and before as I bring the the feed in I just put a scoop on top and then I dump it in the bins for them to eat. If I put the brewer's yeast in this mix before I soaked it the brewer's yeast would rapidly make turn this into something nasty because it has yeast in it and that yeast would activate um, the grains and it would ferment really really fast and get nasty and smelly and I don't want that to happen so I just put it on after before, right before I feed them. Thanks for tuning in and I hope this was helpful. This has just been a tour of my chicken setup. Your chicken setup probably looks very different or yours will uh, but this is just an example of how I've taken the resources I had at hand and my priorities and turned it into a system that works for me. I spend about 10 to 15 minutes a day on my chickens, so it's a pretty low impact, uh, low input system for me and that's because my priority is to spend as little time as possible on this because I have a lot going on and I want to spend my time elsewhere. So I get a lot of production. I spend very little on feed. I'm spending about 60 cents a pound, 50 to 60 cents a pound on feed, which is cheaper than I can buy um, in pre-mixed feeds. And it's organic and it's non-GMO and it's got exactly what I prioritize in my feed. So I can sell my eggs um, as a no corn, no soy for those who are allergic. Um, and my chickens are free ranged and I think that the eggs we get are high quality and my chickens are very happy and healthy. I have never lost a chicken to disease. I've lost them to predation, but not recently because I've tweaked my system. Um, but yeah, so I have really healthy, happy chickens and really great eggs. And this is the system that works for me. So I hope that that was helpful or inspiring, or maybe it just showed you what you don't want yours to look like. Um, but at any rate,